Hello and welcome. In my video last week, I talked about our charging infrastructure that we have here in our garage. And in this video today, what I wanted to go over is our charging adapters and cords for when we are on road trips and away from home. So I keep that in the front of the car. So let me show you that here. Double push the button here on the front of the key fob. That opens up the front here. This is where I keep all of our charging cords. The big cord is, of course, this one right here. And this is a cord capable of charging the car uh, on a 50 amp circuit. You can see there are some details right here on the side of the charging cord. And uh, there it says 50 amps. Um, the plug on it, you can see, is a NEMA 1450. This is the plug end of the NEMA 1450 right here. And then this is the receptacle end. Um, and so I, I love using this extension cord. It's 30 feet long. And I'll include uh, links to all of these adapters I'm about to show you uh, in the description down below. Uh, but the reason why I like this is it just really opens up a lot of opportunities for charging at people's homes or potentially at RV parks um, as you're on a road trip. All right, I've pulled the adapters out in front of the car so that I can go over these and show you in, in detail when and where, how they're used. Over here, we have three adapters, and these are all non-Tesla adapters, and I'll go over those in just a minute. And then this is the Tesla EVSE that came with the car. And it came with a couple of different adapters as well. This is the NEMA 515 outlet, commonly referred to as the standard household outlet. And then we have the NEMA 1450 that is um, capable of charging on a 50 amp circuit. Um, the, the car actually only charges at 40 amps. The reasoning behind only charging at 40 amps on a 50 amp circuit is according to the uh, NEMA, uh, I don't remember what that stands for, but like National Electric Code or something like that, the NEC code, uh, they dictate that when you're pulling a continuous load on an electrical circuit, you can only pull 80% of that uh, maximum so that you can you know, make sure not to cause a fire, basically. And, and so that's why with all of these adapters I'm about to show you, know that when, when I say this, the circuit size is, say, 50, you're only charging at 40. If the circuit size is 30, you're only charging at 24 amps, as an example. Now, this right here is the Gen 1 EVSC, and it has a 20-foot cord. And then you can push a button right here and these adapters come off just like that this is a proprietary connection here on the back and there is communication happening between that adapter and this plug right here and it tells and communicates to the car what type of um, plug is plugged into the evse and that way the car will adjust the amperage automatically to 80 percent of that circuit's maximum then we have here the j1772 adapter so this end is the uh, receptacle end uh, of the J1772 and then this is the plug end of the Tesla so this is what would plug directly into the car itself this is used typically at public charging stations or as you saw in my last video uh, this is what I use regularly at my own home because that's what my uh, charger uses which I have mounted right up there because I use the juice box pro 40 here at my house okay so with this setup here if you were to plug directly into a NEMA 1450, as an example here, you would then have 20 feet of cord to work with before you then use this right here and plug this directly into the car and charge the car, which means you've got 20 feet to work with. And in a lot of situations, that works just fine. However, I wanted to be more um, flexible, so to speak. I, you know, I may run into situations at an RV park, for instance, where I can't get closer to the charger. So that's where these adapters come into play and the extension cord over here. The J1, uh, the uh, NEMA 1450 here is the maximum amount of current that this EVSE can handle. So I figured I might as well build out my whole ecosystem to be based off of that plug. So what I can then do is plug that into this extension cord, just like this. So now I have 20 feet of cord, this plugs into the car, this is the NEMA 1450, which tells the car that it can charge at 40 amps. It's then going into a cord, which is capable of handling 40 amps. This is super beefy. And then over here, we have the uh, plug end of that extension cord, which is 30 feet long. So we have a total of 50 feet between this. But now, what if the plug we want to plug in over here is not a NEMA 1450? Well, there's a couple of things that you have to do. The first thing you would do is, of course, need to locate the receptacle that you're trying to plug into and determine what the pin configuration looks like. This is a, a NEMA uh, 1430, so it's a 30 amp, uh, 240 volt receptacle. 
This is the NEMA at 10:30, and this is also 30 amp, um, uh, 240 volt, and this is the TT30, which stands for travel trailer, and it's only 120 volts, but it's 30 amps. So actually, all three of these are 30 amps. It's just that these two are 240 volts, and this one is 120 volts. This one is typically seen at campgrounds, RV parks, and the like, and these two are for dryer outlets in homes. This one is for homes built after 1993, and this one is for homes built prior to, or up until 1993. You can see the difference here is this one has two hot legs and a ground, whereas this one has the two hot legs and a common, and then the ground up here. So you can have uh, electronics on board the dryer that need 120 volts, and that's what allows the, that to work. Now, the other end of each of these is the NEMA 1450 plug, as you can see right here, or receptacle rather. So you have that there and that there. So with all three of these, they can utilize this extension cord. So if I show up and they've got a newer home and they have a dryer outlet available, I take this adapter and I simply plug it in right here, just like that. It's a pretty firm connection. And now I can plug into their dryer outlet it goes through all the way to 50 feet of cord and it can charge the car. Now this part is very important. Before you actually plug it into the car and start charging, you have to go check the circuit you're plugging into. You don't want to start a fire, obviously. Uh, first, you should go to the electrical panel and verify the breaker size that you have plugged into it. Um, it, it could vary. Uh, just because it's a NEMA 1450 does not mean that the circuit actually is a 50 amp circuit. I, for instance, went to a relative's house and uh, checked their panel and it's supposed to be a 50 amp circuit so I, I would have had this charging at um, uh, 40 amps but when I checked the circuit breaker panel which I recommend everybody always do that um, the the circuit breaker was 40 so I lowered the amperage here as you can see down to 32 amps so that that's 80 percent of uh, the 40 amp circuit that it's actually plugged into. Once you check the electrical panel, then before you plug your car in, you need to go in and change the amperage inside the car on the center screen. Um, by doing that, you then will be able to plug in the car and it will charge at that maximum amperage that you specify. And that amperage is GPS uh, enabled, meaning that you just do it once for that location and as long as you don't change it later, uh, then next time you come back to that location, it's automatically going to charge at that lower amperage, which is obviously great. If you don't do this, the car will think it's plugged into a NEMA 1450 outlet, and it will pull 40 amps. And if you're plugged into a dryer outlet with 30 amps, it will eventually trip the breaker. And if the breaker fails, it could cause a fire. So make sure to adjust that down. In fact, this TT30 adapter came with a sticker on it specifically saying that. Please manually set your Tesla charging limit to 24 amps for this and uh, because this one is only 120 volts, it actually uh, only charges at about uh, 6 kilowatts. Uh, I'll put on screen what it is for all of these. So we have the TT30, and then we have the uh, uh, NEMA 1030 here, and then we have the NEMA uh, 1430 here, and then the NEMA 1450, which is the, the built-in adapter that comes with the car. Then there's the NEMA 515, and that is uh, pretty, pretty low. That charges my car at about three or four miles per hour. Uh, mine's a Model S. A Model 3, it probably charges at closer to five miles per hour, and a Model X is definitely three, if not two miles per hour. And then there is the J1772, and this varies, but in my experience, typically the circuits are 40 amp circuits at 240 volts, or um, 30 amp circuits at 240 volts. Although I found actually often in commercial voltage, the voltage is actually 208 volts, and that means that uh, these ch you know, charge slower. And they're 32 amps, uh, 208 volts, you're, you're not getting as many kilowatts out of that. With this charging setup, which I have set up over time, I have now been able to charge at numerous uh, random locations. Uh, some of them have even been somewhat local, and I've just done it just to see how well it could work. When we went on our trip to Orlando, Florida, which if you haven't seen that uh, series, I'll, I'll link that right here so you can watch that. Um, we charged at a couple of different relatives' homes, and we always called ahead to verify that we could and, and that they'd be okay with it and that there was an outlet available. And if they didn't, then we would have to go to a supercharger and just charge longer at the supercharger. Uh, but it's very convenient to be able to charge at other people's homes because you can spend less time in a supercharger, just get there with you know just enough energy to get there, plug it in, and then the next morning you're typically fully charged. So uh, I highly recommend having some additional adapters if you do very many road trips. 
Now, that being said, we did go on a, a nearly 4,000 mile road trip with just the standard uh, adapters that came with the Tesla. And the only one that we used on that trip was the NEMA 515. Uh, it charges very slowly. We, you know, that's the standard household outlet. We had to charge for, uh, it was about two days to get enough energy to get to the next supercharger. But for what it's worth, we were already going to be there for a couple of days. So that's why I had planned on that and it worked just fine. Um, and in that particular location, there weren't any 240 volt outlets available anyway. So uh, I highly recommend having this set up. It enables you to have an additional extension cord. Uh, the only thing that is limited here is that if you wanted to use a NEMA 515, a standard household outlet, um, and it was farther than 20 feet away, then you would have, then you potentially would want to throw in your frunk in addition to the big beefy extension cord here. You'd want to th and throw in another st strong extension cord, but one that has the NEMA 515 pin configuration. Uh, because as it stands here, my setup only allows for the 20 feet uh, of, um, you know, using the standard Tesla adapter. But those, those 515 extension cords are readily available. Probably the homeowner that you are staying with, um, they probably already have that type of extension cord. You would want to make sure that that extension cord is a heavy duty one uh, because extension cords are, are, are somewhat risky. If the connection points are too loose, it can cause uh, arcing and overheat the connection and cause a fire. So keep that in mind. What I just love about having this charging setup is it really is empowering to know that as you're out on a road trip, um, almost regardless of the circumstances you run into, granted you could expand out your adapter set of course, but with my adapters, I've been able to charge everywhere I've gone. And it's really empowering because like normally you might be concerned about um, you know, the availability of supercharging or some third party fast charger. And uh, in this case, you know, electricity is fairly ubiquitous. It's about everywhere where there's civilization. It's the pipeline, uh, it's the speed that you can get that electricity that is the limiting factor. And so if you're able to tap into people's dryer outlets or stove outlets or welding outlets in their shop or wherever, you can potentially charge your Tesla in all kinds of random locations. And I've done just that. And it's really cool to be able to do that. One thing I forgot to mention is the NEMA 1450 is the standard for stoves, but it's also in RV parks. The 50 amp outlets that RV parks advertise are NEMA 1450s. The 30 amp outlets that they advertise are the TT30s. And keep in mind that the NEMA 1450, that's a 240 volt outlet. The TT30 is a 120 volt outlet. So a big difference there because it's half the voltage. So you're getting half the power. Something I forgot to mention is that in the bag here that comes with the EVSE, on the back of it, there's a compartment you can unzip and it has this right here. You might wonder what that is. And that is for towing. Um, if the car needs to get pulled up onto a flatbed uh, tow truck bed, then um, that's what this is used for. And the way this is used is you have to take off the nose cone and that's fairly easy to take off. You can pry with a screwdriver on either side or you can even just hit here really hard on top and it kind of pops out. And then over here, there is a hole that you can then plug this into. And something to be aware of, this is a counter rotating um, uh, threads. So you actually, to screw it in, you have to turn it to the left. I have a video upcoming where I'm going to be showing where I used that. Also, in case it matters, I weighed all of the adapters and cords together and they amount to 34.2 pounds together. So yes, hauling those around on a trip, you're adding that much weight into the car, um, but it's not a big deal. The extension cord is the heaviest component and I don't carry that around in the car all, all the time, just around town. I only take that when I'm on road trips. With that, uh, that's pretty much my whole charging solution that I wanted to go over with you today. If you have any questions, feel free to post them in the description down below. And if you haven't seen some of my other videos relating to the road trips we've gone on, uh, feel free to go down through my videos list. And there's several different road trips that I outline the charging infrastructure throughout the trip. And with that, thanks for watching and have a great day.